What's going on, fellow A plusers? It is I, your host, Adam Perez. We're back at it once again with another Supergirl review. As we're about to go ahead and get into episode number 17 here. Three episodes left for this season. Uh, it's hard to fathom, and it's really hard to kind of wrap my head around it, to be perfectly honest with you guys. Um, but we're almost there. We did get ourselves a little bit of a preview, a new trailer to kind of see what we can look forward to what we can look forward to in the next three episodes or the last three episodes in my head i'm trying to think to myself who makes it out of here alive who certainly doesn't who gets the happy ending sort of thing i'm getting really nervous guys i can't even lie i'm really getting nervous for the finale but i will say when it comes to this episode man i, I thought this episode had a little bit of everything i truly did enjoy it from um the return of lex luther i mean at, we all love certainly seeing john crier certainly return but now we got a team up between him and Nixley that I'm honestly here for. We definitely got some emotional sides to this episode, pulling at the heartstrings with the proposal of Alex and Kelly. And then, of course, we got some amazing action in here also. Not sure exactly who the director was, but I'm um, really impressed with some of the action pieces and really how intense things certainly were in this episode. But I think everybody's really um fleshing their story arcs out, really leading into the finale of the season. Uh, and I'm really here for it, guys. But the first person that we got to talk about definitely is John Cryer as Lex is back. And he is, in fact, at least trying his damnedest to team up with Nixley. Um, he's been gone for a while. I was kind of curious as to whether or not John Cryer was going to be in this season as Lex. It felt really weird to not have him in the season with him being one of the best villains that they've certainly have had on this show. Um, so the fact that they've at least bringing him back for the final few episodes, smart call on their part because John Cryer just doesn't fail. He, he just never, um, you know, he never wings it or just mails it in sort of thing. You know, you're going to get top notch from John Cryer, especially when it comes to Lex. But I've actually really enjoyed this side of Lex. Like, even though he is still nefarious and still plotting and up to his old ways, you know, the idea of him going into the future, it almost feels like he's definitely has grown from his time when he was in the future over in the 31st century and now seeing him back with this mindset of love which we've never really seen Lex express before or really mentioned so much um, to kind of see this other side to him I, I kind of like it I kind of like it it feels like it definitely has made him a little bit more vulnerable at least in the sense of when it comes to Nixley anybody else he really could care less for just like Otis sort of thing right so for me, I'm really interested to see what John Cryer is going to do with this other side. Somebody that is not as selfish, um, at least when it comes to Nixley's side of things, right? The idea that this is really the only person he's been selfless with to kind of give up power or the opportunity to get his hands on the love totem uh, and uh, decide not to take it just so that he can save the woman that he loves sort of thing. Uh, I absolutely love it. Of course, listen, anytime it involves Lex Luthor, you do wonder if there's an ulterior motive. If, the, if yes, while he might play up the role that he loves somebody, when it comes down to it, right, if Nixley is on the brink of, say, being defeated, you know, is, is Lex Luthor going to be there to try and fall right with her, right, sacrifice himself with her? Uh, or is he about to turn a blind eye and just sort of run off uh, and, and, and try and... Um, preserve himself uh, at the end of the day so we'll see what happens but anytime it's Lex Luthor can't trust the guy but I personally have been enjoying the partnership in here and you guys have heard me say before I thought Nixley has been a great villain for this season and now you collaborate her with Lex Luthor I think we're definitely in for a treat and if this episode is any indication of what the remaining three episodes are going to be like with those two working together uh, I think we're definitely on to something special here because it definitely felt like the 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 um, action was certainly upped. I mean, just the idea of surrounding her in the forest, getting the opportunity to see Nixley move around. If anything, I'm assuming it's the gauntlet that she's wearing that's maybe flinging her wherever she goes. I didn't know she had those type of abilities, but it was rather impressive until Lex Luthor winds up coming in with the explosion and saving her life. And then even the fight sequence that we got at the bar scene towards the end. Incredible stuff, at least when it comes to special effects and just seeing these superheroes and villains just going 
going back and forth with each other. I, I was actually really impressed. I think the idea here for Lex is the fact that when he went to the future, he wind up meeting Nixley after she certainly has acquired all of the abilities and powers or the totems and things like that. Immediately sort of fell in love with him, uh, fell in love with her, and she wind up giving him a chance too. So it's pretty funny to kind of see this meeting in here why Lex has certainly experienced a future with this woman seeing her in present time the fact that Nixley kind of looks at him as like any other narcissistic man that she's ran across right like she definitely has trust issues uh, based off of just her past alone so I love the reluctancy to bring him in and then eventually realizing what his true purpose is and his, the, his true reasons for wanting to work with her uh, and her kind of being swooned a little bit maybe swept off her feet at the idea that somebody is doing a selfless act in order to kind of protect her that kind of stuff really does go a long way so i think this is going to be a match made in heaven and especially with nixley now trusting lex a little bit more very dangerous duo very dangerous to certainly say the least uh, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens between them. But I, I was really impressed by that. Um, and that is the totem that we are looking for. Also, the love totem, which I thought was actually pretty well handled for this episode. I mean, based off of just the concept and the idea of the love totem, really getting to see that love was truly the theme of this episode with Nixley and Lex. Uh, and then, of course, we got Alex uh, and Kelly in here. I actually thought it was a really good, um, really good totem for them to go ahead and certainly focus on here in this week's episode. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about uh, Alex and, and Kelly before we get back to the love totem. Um, I, I love this episode in regards to these two ladies. Um, getting the opportunity to see that Alex wants to propose to Kelly. The idea here is that she wants to go ahead and privately book Al's bar. Uh, I feel like we haven't seen Al's bar in a minute. So the fact that they rolled up at the bar today with Esme, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but unfortunately, Al bumming them out in the sense that, hey, I'm sorry, guys, you can't you can't decorate around here. You can't do whatever you need to because of the fact that this place is gonna be booked on the very day that you need. And the reason Alex needs this is because this was where her and Kelly first met for the first time, right? Really got that first connection, realized that she loved this woman, was gonna spend the rest of her life with her on this particular date, um, you know, at Al's bar and things like that. So Alex, on their anniversary, really wants to go ahead and commemorate that at the same place uh, that she realized she was going to spend the rest of her life with her. So um, I love the anxiousness of Alex, uh, the nervous twitches. Um, it is something about the Alex character that she can really get herself worked up when she's really stressed out. And I think it's adorable and hilarious all at the same time. But what really got me when it comes to Alex's story and Kelly's story in here is the fact that at the end of the episode, we come to discover that that private booking at Al's was Kelly's. Um, and I gotta tell you, man, when I was watching this live, when I see Al's place completely decorated and Kelly walks from around the bar, I had the biggest grin on my face and I was like, what? Like I did, I, I did not expect that whatsoever. Uh, and I'm sure Alex certainly didn't either. But I think, again, this continues to solidify just truly why these two were just so extremely perfect together. I mean, the fact that they both had the same idea, like Kelly, it's almost like Kelly had her vows ready. Um, the fact that Kelly even had an engagement ring also, I mean, the, the mind, the mind connection and bond was just overwhelming between these two and to see little Esme in between uh, the love of these characters in here uh, incredible stuff really almost brought an, uh, a tear to my eye and it is just moments like this especially with somebody like Alex who's they really have been building up this storyline for her for quite a for quite a couple of seasons already it almost felt like they kind of forgot about it but it does truly feel like now alex could potentially have a very happy ending by the end of this season but i am a little worried though and i am worried in regards to the idea that it's esme who is now the love totem and one of the things that they explained in this episode which i thought was really interesting is that if you do destroy a totem it only destroys the shell. The essence and the aura of its power simply just gets transferred to something else. So that hope totem that we see, 
it's still out there. Thanks very much to Lex Luthor who winds up acquiring it from the future um, in a brand new shape. And the same thing has officially happened with the Love Totem as it was destroyed in the brawl at the end. But I'm assuming because of the fact that the Love Totem is drawn to tremendous amounts of love. The fact that we got Alex and Kelly, boom, colliding. And of course, their little love prodigy there in Esme, even though they didn't make her herself. The fact that they clearly are a family just filled with it. Um, I, I do love the fact that um, Esme now seems to be the love totem. And you know it's about to get personal. You know it's about to get personal. Anytime, because you know Lex and... and uh, and Nick Slee are going to try and abduct this kid, try and kidnap this kid. And it's going to have Alex and Kelly like willing to sacrifice themselves and do whatever it takes to certainly kind of get her back. Um, and the fact that you're messing like with a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like that's just deeply personal after what Alex and Kelly have certainly formulated for themselves. So I hope that things stick together. I hope the showrunners don't like just dig a dig a knife in my heart and twist it and kill off Alex or Kelly. I really hope that's not the case. Because I really do want to see a very bright future for these two characters. Because one, I think they look great on screen. I, I think they're great actresses. Uh, and these two ladies definitely convince me that they certainly belong together. And if anything, uh, it just pulls at my heartstrings also. So really enjoyed the storyline that we wind up getting into here. And I thought it just fit well with the theme of the love totem. Uh, the next person I do want to talk about in this episode Brainiac. Uh, Brainiac's been off in this episode, especially with the return of Lex. And to be honest with you guys, Lex has everybody shook at this point, right? I mean, Supergirl is still shook. Um, when she got hit with the Dream Totem, her her nightmares immediately took her to the Phantom Zone, thinking that she herself was turning into a phantom, um, worried about the idea that Lexus, that Lex, Lexus, that Lex was certainly back because of the fact that it's Lex that put her in the phantom zone in the first place, right? So he had definitely has some connections there. Um, clearly with Brainiac, the last time that they had interactions, he literally betrayed his friends to go ahead and help out Lex Luthor. So I'm sure he's feeling some type of way, especially based off of the way that they left things in the previous season. And then of course you got Lena Luthor, who looks like she saw a freaking ghost in this episode with Lex Luthor certainly returning and really sort of jacking up her magic because it wind up causing Lena to be just super emotional. But um, I think Brainy's really stood out to me the most. Um, clearly seeing not only is Lex back, but now he definitely wants to figure out what Lex is up to. Uh, and one of his only ideas that he can come up with is going to the future or at least trying to commute with, co communicate with his friends in the future. That definitely has him very weary about doing something like that, especially over the bad decisions that he wind up making in this uh, in the previous season. But he does he does need to reach out to them. And I love the fact that they have, in fact, convinced them to certainly do so because of the fact that Lex has changed. And I think it's definitely catching Brainiac off guard. And I'm kind of curious exactly what has changed. I, I want to say there's probably more going on with Lex than just he fell in love sort of thing. The idea that he was in the 31st century, I think Brainiac is truly worried that the technology that he certainly might have brought back, right? What other weird creations or something like that has, has Lex Luthor kind of put together? So I do think it's a combination of that, of the idea of maybe not necessarily fully trusting himself, but also the idea of just seeing exactly what Lex Luthor is up to and what other type of um, technology he certainly has to work with. Because we have seen it already in this episode that Lex is using technology he probably shouldn't have. It almost feels like he maybe even upgraded his own Lex armor with 31st technology, um, 31st century technology. And then even the um, the ball that uh, Nixley winds up having, winds up fusing it with some piece of uh, science tech that him and Nixley apparently created created in the future and wind up bringing that over so look if lex has that stuff what else does he certainly have right so i could definitely understand the worry of brainy but jesse rath just plays brainiac so incredibly good um and just based off of the great storyline brainiac and lex had last year i'm really eager to see where this is going to go ahead and take the brainiac character honestly um 
Let's see here. Um, some quick honorable mentions I thought was interesting to check out. Uh, John took the test of courage, what I thought, which I thought was pretty cool. Getting the opportunity to see the the super friends trying to now use the totems as weapons uh, in the sense of harnessing their abilities. So you've got John who takes the test of courage to try and be able to use that ability, and then you wind up having Supergirl that winds up using the humanity totem in here. Uh, one to maybe rip the courage away from Nixley and Lex for doing what they're trying to do or maybe give them some humanity so they can see what they're doing is certainly wrong but before they're able to really utilize it to capture Nixley that's when we see Lex Luthor come into play at the end and wind up selflessly protecting her and saving her sort of thing so I thought it was a really cool plan on their part to go ahead and use the totems to their benefit because they definitely have been sort of one step behind um, and the fact that they're not afraid to use the totems that Supergirl feels very much like she's kind of cornered and in danger to the point to where it's like we got to do something anything to try and save um, save everybody so I, I found it was an interesting decision by Supergirl but I really love seeing John take the test of courage uh, overcoming one one of his moments in his life where he certainly did not have it and I would assume that's the moment in which he wind up leaving Mars and leaving sort of his people behind but you see here in his uh, flashback he decides to stay and fight for his his children uh, unfortunately perishing I believe is what he wind up mentioning but that was in fact his test of courage so uh, I thought that was pretty interesting I thought David Harewood did a good performance in here too right taking his the lesson that he learns from the test of courage and applying it to his current day, his friends, you know, the idea like, hey, you know, I ran away last time. I'm not going to run away this time. You know, I couldn't necessarily save my kids in this test of courage. But the fact that I, I, I will be there to go ahead and protect and save my friends, I kind of really enjoyed that mentality that we wind up having in here. And then last but not least, when it comes to the Kako stuff, and Andrea just seems to be really focused on the idea of trying to take down Lex Luthor. Like, she will not stop. She's still, like, really pissed off about last season when he made her really look like a freaking fool uh, in front of her face over in court sort of thing, just jumping to conclusions uh, without any like real evidence and stuff and seeing uh, Lex just kind of turn things around, really kind of just put a bad mark on Andrea and her um, her company to certainly say the least. So um, to see Andrea really pushing William to get to the bottom of Lex Luthor's return, not really even caring if he's got enough proof, really only giving this guy like 24 hours Whereas like, what are you doing? Like, that's not the way that you run a news company or especially when you know that you've like you're almost there to getting that information. But you got to slow and steady win the race. Right. Isn't that what they say? Um, so Williams got the right idea. Still trying to go ahead and get information how he wind up linking up with Otis and why Otis all of a sudden wants to talk to this guy. Like, is Otis now just realizing like, hey man, Lex Luthor's treated me like shit for years, okay? Like he literally left and left me this company to go ahead and try and try and stabilize me and his mom, if you will, while he was gone this entire time. Um, but look, you know, William is trying to get confirmation that Lex Luthor is in fact back. Um, I'm kind of curious what that connection is between William and Otis and really like what grudge Otis certainly might have against Lex to even be talking in the first place. I mean, maybe he feels like now that, you know, um, Lex is in love, he's like the third wheel once again. Maybe he saw what happened with Miss Tessmacher prior and thought to himself, you know, he he played Miss Tessmacher. You know, she fell in love with him and I got kind of kicked to the curb once again. So I am wondering if Otis is a little bit fed up, if you will. So it should be interesting to see what Otis tells William. But Andrea is just determined to take Lex down and I unfortunately am curious if that's going to be her demise and her downfall once again she's tapping back into those dark powers those dark abilities of hers infiltrating his office to go ahead and try and confirm that he is in fact back uh, and I'm pretty sure she's probably going to go ahead and push a story forward uh, without all the information and it's probably going to come back and bite her in the ass so we'll see what happens but Andrea's playing a very dangerous game uh, when it comes to trying to um, take down Lex Luthor again uh, so we'll see what happens here but overall guys really enjoyed the episode again I thought it had everything from great storytelling great emotions great action um, I, I, I really do I, I really did enjoy this episode here so um, I 
I'm ready, guys. Season finale is almost here. Three more episodes left to go. But remember, these are just simply my A-plus opinions. At the end of the day, I want to know yours. So what did you guys think of episode 17 of Supergirl for its sixth and final season? Let your thoughts be known in the live chat or the comment section box below, guys. But other than that, but until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and keep it A-plus. I'll talk to you.